Hello, and welcome back to the Outdoor Minimalist Podcast. I'm your host, Meg Carney, an outdoor and environmental writer and author of the book, Outdoor Minimalist, Wasteless Hiking, Camping, and Backpacking. The Outdoor Minimalist Podcast has a goal to give listeners actionable ways to waste less hiking, camping, backpacking, and more during every step of their process. Your impact outdoors starts long before you hit the trail and goes beyond leave no trace ethics. You'll learn how to identify sustainable outdoor brands, how to ask hard questions regarding sustainability, and begin to shift and evolve your mindset to integrate minimalism into all of your outdoor pursuits. In episode 87 of the Outdoor Minimalist podcast, we are going back to the foundational concepts of minimalism and mindfulness. Minimalism looks different for everyone, and all of our life experiences impact our lifestyle choices. So to dive deeper into how minimalism can change the way we live our lives and how minimizing your life can effectively minimize stress, I had the pleasure of sitting down and chatting with Becca Ploner. Becca is a whitewater kayak instructor, health, and life coach. She works with women who feel overworked, burnt out, and like they have no time for themselves. She helps bring intention back to folks' lives so they can reconnect with their true, adventurous, authentic selves and get back to doing the things they love. Thanks for joining me today on the Outdoor Minimalist podcast, Becca. Before we get started into the topic of minimalism and how it fits into our life, I would love to know a little bit more about you and your background. So how did you start to get involved in outdoor recreation and how does it fit into your current life today? Thanks for, thanks for having me on the podcast. Um, I, I grew up in a relatively outdoorsy family in terms of like, we went camping, a lot of car camping growing up. Um, and I actually went out to Montana. I grew up in Delaware, but I went to Montana every summer to visit my aunt who kind of funny story, different story. We call her uncle Rusi, but so uncle Rusi, we were visiting my, my aunt, uncle Rusi, um, in Montana and she would take us on all kinds of adventures. And my uncle John also lived there, her, um, her brother. Um, so we would go like horseback riding and backpacking and whitewater rafting, like very, very chill whitewater rafting, <laughs> um, like class one plus, um, and just that kind of like, like instilled the outdoor, the love for the outdoors in me from a very young age. Um, and then when I got to college, I, I like, I started as a music major, but then two years in, it got burnt out of music and people were like, what would you do if you didn't do music? And I was like, I would love to try rock climbing. So I started rock climbing um, at our college gym. And that was kind of my like gateway into high adventure sports. And from there, I like became a trip leader and started whitewater kayaking. And now whitewater kayaking is like my main jam. Um, And I've been a raft guide. I also mountain bike. Um, Yeah, I just like fell in love and took off with it from there. (laughs) But I started mainly in college. That's awesome. And um, if I remember correctly, you live in kind of a really, really good area for whitewater sports um, in North Carolina, right? Yeah, I live in Asheville, North Carolina, or just outside of it. Awesome. I also kind of started to get into more like high intensity outdoor recreation stuff in college and at university which I feel like it's a great time to do it. You know, you're really like kind of like discovering who you are and the things that you want to do with life. Um, You wish you didn't have to pay so much to do that, but. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's why college was awesome. They had so many resources um, for students to have and like all of our, a lot of our instructional stuff was super cheap and um, we had like role clinics and the climbing gym was free for students. I went to Appalachian State. (laughs) <laughs> oh nice for yeah. State. <laughs> go there and get into outdoor industry <laughs> where is that located that's in Boone North Carolina oh, okay so pretty close to where you're living now nice yeah yeah awesome so during that process like while you were learning more about the things that you like to do outdoors and then potential like career trajectories um would you say that you always kind of like subscribed to a minimalist lifestyle? Was that a way that you were raised or is that something that you kind of adopted over time? I definitely would not have 
described myself as a minimalist when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, and like my family definitely, it's like, oh, I could use this for something. I could use this for something. We never really threw, not never threw things away, but more towards the hoarder side. <laughs> um, and then I like, I guess it was, is like the start of COVID. Um, and when I was graduating college, starting to like move away and figure out who I was, I um, considered van life and I built out my, my Subaru. I guess it wasn't a van. It was a Subaru. Um, I built it out and I was like committed to fitting everything I owned in my Subaru with living space. So that is like what kickstarted the minimalist um, journey for me in the, around 2020. Yeah, any type of car living, I feel like is like forced minimalism. And it's a great way to fast track that learning process. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How long did you um, live in a vehicle then? So I lived in my Subaru from like, it got postponed because COVID got worse than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> but a year later, after I built it, um, I moved in in like August of 2021 or uh, sorry, May of 2021, and then moved out of it probably around like October um, of the same year. And then I guess I moved out of it because I got rear-ended. So. Oh no. <laughs> um, and then I lived in a house for a bit um, in Asheville and then I'm traded cars with my mom and got her minivan. And so nice. I moved in like built out my minivan and lived in that for um for around like nine months and that was more recently awesome yeah minivan is quite the upgrade from a Subaru oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. I had so much more space <laughs> <laughs> so would you say the car camping and car living were kind of like the main life experiences that really influence your current lifestyle choices or were there any other things kind of along the way that would have contributed to that mindset? I think, um, so I mentioned that I started as a music major and then I got more into like the outdoor stuff and then um, eventually found myself as a psych major, a psychology um, major. And we focused a lot on sustainability. Um, and so that definitely influenced um, the like minimalist mindset as well. I took a class called sustainability psychology and we talked about like clothing and how the like clothing industry affects the environment. And then like, we also talk about how it affects our, our like decision-making and all of that kind of stuff. So I think I probably would have gone started drifting towards minimalism as well, just from the psych background. Um, but definitely the like van life helped a lot too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind of the combination of things. So when you uh, finished university, did you graduate with a psych degree then? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, Psychology is so interesting. Um, and I feel like there's so many um, opportunities, like so many different things that you can do with it, but great, great uh, subject to learn from and learn about yourself from. Um, so on that topic and note like of psychology and like what the world means to you um how would you define minimalism because there's a lot of different applications and meanings so I'm curious what it means to you yeah I have thought about this a decent amount I think the main thing that comes to mind with minimalism is being intentional with the things that I own and the way that I spend my time I feel like it Minimalism to me is not just with the stuff. It's also like in my schedule and in like my diet and like the people that I have around me in my life um, and just being intentional with that and making sure everything is like in alignment with my values and has like a purpose or brings me joy or something like that. So if something like is weighing me down in some way, then I'm like, all right, let's get rid of it. <laughs> Um, obviously things can be challenging in life and you should push through challenges and build resiliency and stuff. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I think, you know what I mean with that. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that my definition of minimalism would be similar to that kind of like a broader spectrum 
instead of just like latching on to the physical items. But I think the physical items are often the easiest place to start. And then at least for me and like my journey through it is like, I kind of started with that and then learned about the other aspects and how it applied to like my mental health and my relationships and really everything that I do in a day. (laughs) So I also want to talk about um, like how you actually practice it. What do you do in your day-to-day life or the decisions that you're making that would be kind of examples of applying the minimalism or a minimalist mindset? There you go. (laughs) Yeah. So you mentioned how like sometimes the stuff is the easiest thing to um, to start with. So I'll start with what I do with my stuff, I guess. Um, I think clothes and fashion are so powerful in our mindset. And also they take up a lot of our space probably for most people. Um, at least it did in my car. <laughs> um, and it felt like a pretty easy thing. It's like pretty normal to go through your stuff and like do the spring cleaning and stuff. So with my clothes, I try to make sure that they're all like within a similar color scheme so that they all like match each other. And that's kind of my style too, is like wearing mismatched stuff a little bit, but they're all the same color. So not the same color exactly, but <laughs> um, they all like kind of match each other. So I can wear a lot of different outfits with the same like four articles of clothing. Um, and I, I try to avoid like buying a ton of statement pieces that I would only wear like one time or wear one way. Um, and then in terms of like, I do have a lot of gear. <laughs> um, I, and I guess that goes into like, I thought, I don't think that minimalism necessarily means having a tiny amount of stuff or having like the least amount of stuff possible. I think it's just making sure that everything I have has an intention behind it so while I have like whitewater kayaking gear and an extra set of whitewater kayaking gear for people I want to teach and like my mountain biking gear and running and snowboarding um I try to buy things that like will work for other like multiple sports like my base layers are more in layers and I don't have as many like super thick ones because I'll just wear like three layers instead (laughs) um so that things are more um versatile and I also like try and repair things a lot rather than going out and buying something new or getting rid of it. And that kind of goes into the sustainability aspect of it for me too, more than necessarily the minimalist, but minimalism in all of all of the world, <laughs> less items in the world. <laughs> um, yeah. And then like in my schedule and in my relationships, like by clearing clearing my schedule of things that I like don't actually want to do. Like if someone asks me to do something and I'm like not super stoked on it, I will just tell them that I'm not super stoked on it. And that way I have time in my schedule to do things that I actually really want to do. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I feel like that is kind of how I practice minimalism in my daily life. Yeah, those are some really great examples. I really like the example with the clothing because it it does feel really intentional. Um, And then like also mentioning the base layers and like the application for all the clothes, because I think sometimes when people are shopping, they're just doing it for something to do or because it makes them feel good or they're like, oh, that's really cute. Um, And not always um, like analyzing, like, what am I actually going to wear this for? Mm -hmm. Um, So I like that. Um, you kind of take that approach. Um, I am wondering because of the, I guess, like psychology of minimalism and like general mindset and stuff like that. Have you found um, through this process that like, how do I say this? Um, Because there's the general idea um, that if there is less like clutter or less things around you, that you're not necessarily less stressed, but you maybe have like a clearer mindset or you have more time to do other things, or it maybe reduces like depression or anxiety and things like that. So have you found that that is helpful in applying minimalism to physical items? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like 
I mean, everything in life can be a metaphor. <laughs> um, and I use kayaking a lot as a metaphor, but um, it, in terms of minimalism, I feel like my by going through my clothes specifically, and I also had to do this with like every part of my life, like what furniture I wanted to keep and what um, what kitchen utensils I wanted. But um, I it's kind of like a practice of holding boundaries um, with myself. And so by holding myself accountable to this, like I have to fit this stuff in my car or I only want to have like a goal of like 10 shirts total. Um, then I feel like I've practiced so much boundary setting with myself and holding myself accountable that that has translated so, so easily into relationships, especially, um, and speaking up when I am like, not happy with something or um it also helps with making decisions um because I have you have to go I mean I went through having like a lot of I had like a dresser that was overflowing and a closet that was overflowing in college from just like going on goodwill shopping sprees <laughs> um and so you have to make so many decisions so it's practice making decisions practice holding boundaries um and I feel like it's made, it's just helped me with that, like critical thinking and being able to say no, because yeah, I had to say no to a lot of pieces of clothing and pieces of kitchen wear. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also feel like even though I had to make that many decisions to begin with when I was starting the minimalist lifestyle, um, now that I'm like more in it and I have less stuff, still have a decent amount of stuff, but less stuff. And all the stuff is like so meaningful to me. Um, it makes everyday decisions easier um, because I think there are less of them. Um, like when I wake up in the morning, I see my clothes and I'm like, I literally can wear anything today. <laughs> as long as it's warm enough or cold enough. For the weather and like it fits what I want to do but like most of my clothes like one of the things when I was going through my clothes are like I want to be able to go rock climbing in anything that I own <laughs> that was a requirement so all of my pants are stretchy and don't like make me feel fat um and they're like I look in the mirror and I'm like oh I look good in this and <laughs> I'm like so excited to wear this <laughs> um and it works well with my harness and like, I'm also not too worried about getting it dirty. Um, so it just makes it so that I don't have to, that, like, all the little decisions in our life add up. I used to have so many chapsticks. Now I have, like, one chapstick by my bed and, like, one in my bag, the one bag that I use to carry around anywhere I go. Um, so even little things like what flavor chapstick do I want? <laughs> what, uh, what like conditioner am I going to use today or something like that? Just having less, less decisions is less emotional clutter. Yeah. And it kind of like bogs you down less. And I do like that you related it to boundaries because I often think of it that way as well. Um, so when you are starting to like implement and set those boundaries with yourself, because Oftentimes I think it's easier to set boundaries with myself and then apply it to other people in relationships like you're talking about. Um, so like, what did that process look, look like? Like learning how to set boundaries with yourself and kind of um, like aligning those things with your values. What does that self-discovery look like? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so another thing in my life is that I'm, I'm vegan. <laughs> um, at least right now I'm vegan, always questioning it, but, um, not the vegan lifestyle necessarily, just questioning everything. Um, yes. <laughs> and especially with food, I, and like veganism is pretty like not super restrictive. I don't think, but it's more restrictive than the average, like standard American diet where you literally eat anything that you want at any time um it's made me like go through and I have to read the labels and like check things um and like at first that's overwhelming 
Um, <laughs> it's a new skill that you have to learn. Um, and then like, and it's also hard when everyone like around you is like, oh, offering you food or offering you free food, especially in college. There's so many opportunities for free food. <laughs> and then I have to like turn things down because <laughs> I'm vegan now. Um, or because I like don't want a bunch of free crap that they give you like pens and <laughs> random things that they give you at college events, t-shirts and balls and random things. Um, so like at first that's hard, but then I think it gets easier as you do it. And I've also noticed um, like as it's gotten easier and I become more confident in like my values that has translated also to like other people in my life, um, seeing like that I have these values and then it makes them like think about, oh, what are my values? Or like, oh, I see why she's doing that. I like that. Like maybe I'll join her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess that's like how I got into veganism too. And, and van life, a bunch of my friends were doing van stuff. And um, yeah, so I've, feel like I don't know if I'm necessarily answering your question but it's like at first it was hard and then it got easier and easier and easier and then I felt like I gained confidence and was starting to influence other people um positively and then now I have a whole like crew of people that are like doing the same thing that I'm doing and it's it just makes it exciting and um empowering to like keep moving forward and yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think so. I mean, it sounds like you found something that like inherently aligned with values that you already had. And it was kind of like, this is like a physical thing that I can implement and like set boundaries around not only like when I'm alone, but like sometimes I have to do it in public places as well, which like I am also vegan. And so like during that process is kind of like, it became a little bit difficult, especially with like close friends or family that maybe didn't understand the values or the reasons why I was like saying no to something that I used to enjoy or something like that, that then like overcoming those difficult situations made it easier to apply in other scenarios. So that's kind of like what I'm gathering from you. And then yeah, like yeah. also, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just agree. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was saying also, it sounded like then that kind of just helped you. Yeah. Implement it in other areas and start to discover new parts of yourself and then also align and find a community that could support those choices, which I think is one of the most important things. It was one of the most important things for me is to find like-minded individuals that like I could learn from and that would support my decisions and not necessarily, um, they would they influence. I mean, people, you influence people, people influence you, but like that would have a positive influence, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So speaking of influences, and since we're talking about people and communities and relationships, I want to talk a little bit about how you can apply minimalism to relationships and your personal time and emotional energy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> where to start? Um, a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how to apply it to your your time, I guess, first. I mean, by having less stuff, like from the stuff aspect or having less of it, you're going to spend less time like organizing and cleaning and doing all that stuff, which like in itself is going to give you more time to do the things that you want to do um and kind of on a similar like topic of what we were just talking about like when you I just lost my train of thought <laughs> um when you practice something you're gonna get better at it so when we're practicing saying no to ourselves <laughs> like no I can't have 30 different striped t-shirts like <laughs> I need to just have one maybe two if I really like striped shirts <laughs> um then like I'm gonna be better at saying no to things that I don't want to do 
um, and things that I, and things that I do want to do. I'm also going to learn how to identify what I want, which I think is an underestimated skill. Um, a lot of people, especially women are taught that we're like, what we want doesn't matter. It's like, we are the caregiver. It's what everyone else wants. So I think this journey has also helped me identify like, oh, I like, this is like the style that I like, or this is the, this is what I want to come present as, or this, these are the things that I want to do. These are the types of people that I want to hang out with, or this is how I want to feel. Um, especially getting rid of any clothes that, um, clothes obviously has a huge impact for me. <laughs> Talked about it a lot. Um, but especially getting rid of clothes that like don't feel comfortable to me or are itchy, um, are like, don't make me feel self-confident, um, with how I look that in itself changes so much. Cause if you feel confident in how you look by, because of what you're wearing or yeah, then you're going to present as more confident as well. And I feel like that also makes you more approachable and makes other people like want to spend more time with you and stuff too. Um, so how can that, how can being minimalist affect your relationships? I feel like it, it can make you more confident. And if you're more confident, then you're going to like reach out to people more and you're going to like maybe not read into things as much. <laughs> um, so, and you're just going to be like more, more set in like who you are and what you want. Um, and I think that that helps a lot with relationships I'm kind of rambling. Um, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. What you're saying makes sense because it is all related and it's speaking to a lot of the things that you have already kind of mentioned, kind of like the progression and how it can kind of propel you to understand yourself at that deeper level and then, like you said, give you the confidence to say no or set boundaries in other situations. Um, yeah. Awesome. I'm trying to think now. We talked a lot about a lot of things. You have a lot of really great points. So <laughs> do you find that living the more intentional, um, like minimalist lifestyle, do you find it difficult in any scenarios or like overwhelming sometimes? Um, I think at first, like, yeah, definitely anything new, it's going to be a little overwhelming. <laughs> um, and it is hard to say no, it's still hard, even though I feel like I say no all the freaking time. <laughs> um, and with this lifestyle, you have to say no probably more than the average person. <laughs> um, but I, I really like, it comes back to like, I ask myself, does this align with my values all the time? Like pretty much every decision I make, I'm like, does this align with my values? Does this go with how I want to feel today? Am I making a decision that is helping me in some way? And like, sometimes I'm like, does it feel good in the moment? Okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> sometimes that's the goal of the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so sometimes it's hard, but overall I feel like I really believe in it. And so I feel like it, it comes pretty easily, not like easily in a, in not a lazy way, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, it gets easier over time. And I mean, yeah. it sounds like that core question is kind of just like, you're returning to your why, like, why am I doing this? Like, what are my values? Um, and I love that. I love asking questions about the things that I do and why that I do, why I do them. Um, and that does help be more intentional in day to day and sometimes be more present. Um, so we've, you've given a lot of different like examples and applications and then kind of how it has like flowed throughout your life to apply these different things. So do you have any resources or suggestions that you could give to listeners that would maybe help them start to implement 
uh, more minimalist practices into their life? Yeah. So the first thing I did, I mean, I went heavy with the um, Marie Kondo stuff (laughs) when I first started. (laughs) Uh, like going, I started with my closet because I knew that that had a big impact, but find something, find something that feels like it will a not be super intimidating or challenging, like find an area of your house. Maybe that is your bathroom. For me, the bathroom is a very hard one to narrow down, <laughs> um, but maybe it's your bathroom, like all of your um soaps and fun stuff like that maybe it's your closet maybe it's your kitchen but pick one area that doesn't feel intimidating um and but also feels like it will have a big impact and just go through that those stuff and if it doesn't make you like super excited like giddy and like you want to you want to be sponsored by them you want to like sell their stuff for them if it doesn't make you feel like that give it away, put it in a box and give it to a friend or do a clothing swap or something, um, or donate it to Goodwill, give it to a homeless shelter, um, get rid of it. (laughs) Um, yeah. And like, if it's your clothing, if it doesn't, if it makes you feel fat, if it makes you feel, um, insecure, if it makes you feel like itchy, get rid of it. Even if you like it, if it makes you itchy, you're not going to actually wear it that often. So get rid of it. Um, or replace it with something that doesn't make it <laughs> make you itchy. <laughs> <laughs> and just start with something small. Um, don't like, if the whole closet is too much, just do your shirts or just do your socks. <laughs> um, start with something small. And then when we make one small, small action and complete it, that breeds success. And then that success makes you excited and empowered to make another small step towards success. So just start with something small and that will, that will crash fire into. Crash into fire. Success. I don't know. If that was Absolutely. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it kind of has that snowball effect. Right. And yeah, not one. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like crash fire a little bit better. It's yeah. <laughs> I like that one. I'm going to save it for later. Um, <laughs> um, but the, I think kind of like what I'm understanding from what you're saying is just kind of like do something that is achievable because if you go some, for some people, it works to just kind of like go all in and do a giant purge, get it over with. But for other people, that sounds like really overwhelming. And so like, kind of like just chipping away at it over time. And then pretty soon it just becomes a habit, which I think is really great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I know you have a lot that you can share and a lot of ways that people can still learn from you. So how can listeners um, get to know you a little bit better and follow along with your journey? Yeah, the best way um, to get in touch with me is to shoot me an email. Uh, My email is rploner, P-L-O-E-N-E-R at gmail.com. Um, and then I also have a website. I'm not really on social media cause that's, I mean, like I have like my private accounts, but, um, and some of them are public. Um, but I don't, I try not to post too much about, um, like my business and stuff because I don't like social media that much. Um, but if you, if you send me an email, I send out newsletters, um, and I give a bunch of free resources that way. Um, and people can work with me in coaching and come kayaking with me. Um, I teach kayaking too. And then I have a website, um, which is rploner, um, dot Wix site, W I X S I T E dot com slash Becca Ploner. Yeah. Awesome. I'll be sure to include all of that information so people can reach out and check out your website, um, if they want to, but with that, thank you for taking the time to sit down and chat today. Yeah, thanks so much, Meg. This was really fun. I enjoyed talking with you. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you hear, let me know. Leave a review and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on Instagram at outdoor.minimalist.book or subscribe to our weekly newsletter at theoutdoorminimalist.com.
for even more updates, educational resources, and to help build an outdoor community with the shared goal to create a better outdoor space as we recreate.